Hello and let's talk about the urban economy. The COVID-19 related lockdown has caused a major wave of reverse migration with hundreds of thousands if not more heading to their hometowns. The government for the large part has not really addressed these issues except for of course standing by a state government have mounted an assault on labor laws. Now this raises quite a few questions about what is likely to happen in the next couple of months a time when many pro government experts say that there will be a revival. Will urban unemployment rates come down? Are any kind of steps being planned to address this situation? We talk to journalist Anandya Chakravarti to find out. Thank you, Anandya, so much for joining us. So uh, today we're going to be talking about largely the urban economy uh, as the lockdown, uh, if you can call this a lockdown, progresses. So we have been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. We've seen the impact of the migration. We've seen a huge number of people, of course, going back to their hometowns. And yeah. one of the key issues is what kind of uh, of course, the government has been working under the assumption that this is a temporary thing, everyone will, everyone will come back and things will be hunky-dory again. But uh, I, it doesn't look like that may be the situation. So how do you see this? What kind of, say, for lack of a better word, trickle-down effect might this have on the urban economy itself? So, uh, you know, the Prime Minister recently said that uh, most businesses are back in action. The lockdown is more or less over and much of it is back in operation in urban India. And I actually uh, messaged a friend of mine who uh, runs a couple of restaurants in Delhi. And I asked, uh, well, maybe restaurants is not the best people to ask, but I did ask her that, what do you think of this? Is, that, is this true? And uh, she uh, was not very happy with the Prime Minister's statement, if I could put it mildly. <laughs> right? Uh, she said that, uh, you know, uh, this is absolutely news to me. I wonder who is doing where. I also have another friend who, uh, you know, supplies furniture parts and stuff like that. His business has not recovered. Nothing is happening in that. There's another friend who is a carpet supplier. They're completely dead. There's nothing happening there either. So all of the urban operations, I don't know what the Prime Minister is talking about where it's come back, I don't know, because even if you look at CMI data, unemployment in urban India, the overall unemployment rate has, uh, uh, you know, it had peaked at about 30%, according to Mahesh Vyas's article, and it, that has dropped to 13%, but it's largely driven by uh, the fact that unemployment in rural India has dropped much faster. And ma ma we know that about 70% of workers in India are actually in rural India. So, Given that um, if unemployment there drops faster, you'll see that the 13% number actually hides a pretty high unemployment rate that continues in urban India. Unemployment rate in urban India continues to be 50% more than what it was in uh, before the lockdown. And already it was pretty bad. It wasn't as if it was fantastic uh, in March. We knew that things were doing badly. So the question is, what is the government doing about it? I think that the government currently has no plan for it because the government's economic solutions are all band-aid solutions, uh, Prashant. Right. So one of the key questions, uh, are, one of the key arguments for the government is that people are going to come back. And it's inevitable. People need jobs, so they're going to come back. Do you see that really happening in the way the government is predicting? I think the government is anticipating that people won't come back. Because okay. you look at it, the uh, uh, Prime Minister is going to announce a new series of schemes. Uh, called the Pradhan Mantri, I think it's called the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Rozgar Yojana, right? Rozgar Yojana. And <clears throat> these are all actually already there in the budget. They're all going to be clubbed together and front loaded. 50,000 crore rupees is being given for that, out of which most of the money is already budgeted for. And it includes the 40,000 crore odd, which the government has announced as additional for Manrega. Now, look at what has happened in Mandrega. Mandrega demand has gone up sharp. We know that in April, obviously, it wasn't because uh, there was a uh, complete lockdown. So, in April, demand fell sharply. Demand fell from about uh, uh, last year in 2019, in April, about 2.2 crore, sorry, 2.1 crore odd uh, households asked for jobs under Mandrega and only about 1.7 crore got jobs. So, you could see that about 20% of those who had demanded jobs in April 2019 didn't get. Or households. The, the comparable data is available for households because when you go to look for people with jobs, you get person days and not people, which is understandable because the same people get work or across months. In uh, 
April 2020, remember 2.1 crore people demanded job, households demanded jobs in April 2019. That dropped to 1.3 crore households demanding jobs in uh, uh, April 2020. That's all because of the lockdown, because we know that no one left the villages. People were living urban India to go to the villages, so they should have asked for more jobs. But it dropped, and the number of jobs that were provided, that could be provided by state governments, fell from 1.7 crore down to about 1.1 crore. So, but the strike rate, in a sense, we know that about only 80% of the people could be provided jobs uh, last April. This April, about uh, uh, the number of people who couldn't be provided jobs fell to about 86% uh, about were provided jobs. So those who couldn't be provided jobs fell from 20% to about 14%. Look at May now. Now, this is significant. Last year, about 2.5 crore households asked for work and about 2.1, uh, 2.12 uh, crore, uh, 2.12 crore uh, households got work. So we know that about 37 lakh households did not get work last year in May. This year, 33 lakh households did not get work. But that is compared to a massive increase in demand. 3.6 crore households. Instead of 2.5 crore, 3.6 crore households, as in 1.1 crore extra households have asked for work in uh, May. So you can see that part of it was because of uh, uh, the impact of lockdown and also because the loss of opportunity of uh, various kinds of work. So people who would otherwise have been working in non-agricultural operations, getting some kind of income from that. They lost that income and they had to go to Manrega to look for jobs, even when uh, not that many people had gone. We all know that it's only by the end of May or early June that about one crore people went. How many jobs were given? About 3.28 crore jobs were given. Work was given in terms of number of households who got benefit from Manrega. So that's a huge increase. That's a 55% increase compared to last May. Entirely driven by demand, entirely driven by the fact that state governments were in a bind, they had to give some work, otherwise there would have been a huge problem. If I add April and May, demand went up by 6%, uh, that is despite a sharp fall in demand in April, and uh, the jobs provided went up by nearly 15%. So April, May, about 56 lakh more people, households got work again under Mandrega, and that is set to increase. So in, in, in effect, if you look at it, partly rural jobs gone, that was absorbed under Mandrega, which is why we saw that uh, rural unemployment has actually dropped faster. And now the rural workforce is going to increase, mind you, Pr uh, Prashant, because if you look at the number of people who work, have work in rural India, that's about 28 crore. That's going to go up to 29 crore. So uh, that work has to be provided. And that is what the government is trying to do. It, is, it says it will provide about 67 to 68 lack new jobs uh, or work in uh, rural India for the one crore people. So they're betting that a lot of people will not come back out of fear. A lot of people uh, will probably say that uh, marna hai, na kha ke marna hai, then go and work because they did get caught here and they were in dire straits. Man, many people were, uh, and we know a lot of them died on their way. So I'm, I don't think that the government can be that sure that people will come back. And that's, that's a problem. Then I don't think the government has any answer for that. Right. And in some ways, probably that's part of their calculation as well, considering, like you mentioned earlier, the Bihar elections are also coming up. Absolutely. That's, uh, you remember that there were these uh, uh, stories we heard from Bihar where people, migrant workers who had reached their homes said that, why should we vote for Nitish Kumar if he cannot provide us jobs here? We want jobs here. So in a certain sense, that's part of the calculation because Bihar has been mentioned. Of course, UP has been mentioned. Uh, UP is still a couple of years away. Um, so uh, there's still time for UP, but Bihar is almost immediately now. Uh, so that is one thing. And they've virtually started campaigning there. So that, this is part of that campaign. This is part of giving those jobs or at least promising those jobs. And uh, we know that that is why under the guise of uh, providing jobs under COVID uh, to, to bring us out of coronavirus-related economic slowdown, mm -hmm. expenditure is being front-loaded. Because otherwise, the Election Commission can ask a question. But why are you front-loading so much expenditure in front, uh, before the election? So you can 
Well, it's a good way to do it, right? Yeah. So, uh, in practical terms, what happens when a substantial chunk of, say, your calculation right now is about one crore, people have left the urban centers. Yeah. So, yeah. in practical terms, what happens to the urban economy and who gets affected? You know what, the per people who get affected, now interestingly, uh, we, uh, some estimates suggest that four crore migrant workers uh, work in various parts of India, but many of them are probably also in rural India. We know that in Punjab, in Haryana, there are people who uh, were uh, laborers in agriculture, in villages are also from uh, Eastern India, from Bihar, some from Bengal. Uh, so given that, uh, Let's say, let's assume that at least three crore are in urban centers, right? So one crore, and out of that, if we say 75% went from urban centers and not from villages, right? Then uh, we would say that there's a sharp drop in the availability of uh, workers in uh, urban India. Now, that means that when you go out, and we know how construction takes place, right? There's a builder who comes, and there's no uh, fixed contract. They have a labor contractor and the labor contractor goes every day to the local labor mandi, picks up one mason, says that teen din ka kaam hai, basin lagana hai, yaan pe ye kanal ka lagana hai, yaan pe tile lagana hai, tiling ka kaam teen din. So this is how they arrange it and uh, this is how builders arrange their work. And uh, now when you don't have that person sitting out there, then that work is going to get affected. When that work gets affected, what happens to the rest of the people, people like us? I don't, I don't know. I mean, if I were an entrepreneur and I have to pay more for uh, the blue collar worker, then I will have to cut money from the white collar worker. So in some senses, there is a leveling that's happening, but that leveling is happening without any uh, productive process being uh, set into motion. It's not as if, you see, what is the amount of money you're going to get under Mandrega? 150 days of work and 20 rupees extra. So you're going to earn, what, 3,000 rupees extra in the year? 150 rupee, uh, days of work at 200 rupees per day on an average. You'll end up with 30,000 rupees. That's 2,500 rupees household income uh, for, um, for uh, 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 rural to poor. On top of that, most people who would work in Manrega probably earn not more than 1,000, 1,200 from agricultural operations and non-agricultural operations per month. So the income that you're insuring is about 4,000, right? 4,000. Now, many have marginal, uh, marginal farmers with small plots of land. They get another 6,500 uh, uh, 6, rupees from uh, PM Kisan. There are some other schemes here and there. I'm sure that the government will increase, extend the free ration for some time. So if you look at it, it's essentially, which we have discussed several times, it's essentially ensuring subsistence level existence for about six crore, six to uh, seven crore people out of the workforce. And that is 15% of India's workforce, right? So uh, if you look at it, six crore and multiply that by five, so that's 30 crore odd out of 130 crore. So uh, of people and most of them in rural India, so if you look at it, uh, Prashant, essentially what we're seeing is a largely unprotective band-aid solution uh, to keep people at the subsistence level, people who will see you as your benefactor, because ultimately all schemes come with the name Pradhan Mantri and they have nice posters of uh, the PM out there. Uh, so it's, a go it's, a, it's the most cost-effective way to get votes. But what happens to the rest of the economy? There is no plan. That's what uh, I've been saying for some time. Absolutely no plan. Thank you, Aradhya, so much for speaking to us. No, thank you, Prashant. That's all we have time for today in Let's Talk. We'll be back on Monday with major news developments from the country. Until then, keep watching News Click.